the new version of fieldcom.net updates some familiar screens. One of the screens that has changed is the Today screen. We've added a couple additional features to the Today screen. One of the additions is the Exchange screen. The Exchange screen is now located inside of the Today screen, and it looks very similar to the Exchange screen that you are used to. The big addition to it is the Exchange Automation Log. This allows you to search for any items that have appeared using the automated field exchange feature. Also in the Today screen are some updated fields for the Preservation and Inspection sections. These both give you the tree view that you're used to before, but it's over at the left side of the screen now. And it's been relocated so that you're able to see a quick view of any of the orders in the screen. Clicking on any of the items inside of the tree view shows you a list of the orders located within. You can also pull open the search results screen the way you did before by double clicking on any of those lines. We've recolored some of the lines in order to give you a clearer understanding of jobs and their due dates. Any jobs that are due within three days are colored green. Jobs that are due within two days are colored yellow. Jobs that are due tomorrow are colored orange. And jobs that are either due today or are late are colored red, so they grab your attention. Another addition is the new message center. The message center contains memos that have been sent to you and also memos that you've sent to other users. At the top of the message center is the inbox and this is what contains all of the messages that have been sent to you. Inside the inbox you can read any messages that have been sent and by clicking on the envelope icon, you can mark those messages as having been read. And this is going to notify the sender that you've read it. Beneath the inbox is the outbox, which contains any messages that you've sent that have not gone out yet. This is going to contain any messages that you've sent through the Exchange system that have not yet been sent through Exchange. And finally, we get to the Sent section, which contains all of the memos that you've sent to other users. You can read inside of here which ones have been received and which ones have not yet been received by the recipient. Everything inside the Message Center is a memo, which has been created on a work order. These memos take the place of the notes that you are more familiar with. To get to any of those memos, you're going to open up one of the work orders. And this work order is late, so we want to ask for an extension. We can do that by going to the Memos tab. Inside the Memos tab, we can create a new memo for this order and we'll type out the text that's going to appear. If you mistype anything inside of the memo, there's now a spell check feature to help you out. If a word gets flagged as being misspelled, you can right click it and choose the spelling suggestion from the menu. If you want to send the memo to another user, you can select that user from the top of the screen. If you click on Lead Vendor, this memo is going to be sent to the vendor. If you choose Client, this memo will be sent to the client. And you can also send this memo to Office users if you click on More and choose them from the list. You can highlight any users who should be receiving this memo and then click the next arrow to add them to the recipients list. The other two options at the top of the screen 
work the same as they did when this was called notes. Choosing visible on reports will cause this memo to appear on the work orders and choosing alert will cause this to be added to the alert screen. We also have memos inside the clients and the vendor screen. If you need to add a memo to a client, you can go to the client screen. You can choose the client and go to the memos tab and view memos that have been created or create new ones by clicking the new button. The same thing applies to the vendor screen. To create a memo for a new vendor, highlight the vendor, click the memos tab, and then create the new memo. We've updated some items inside of the batch function screen. The first thing that we've added is the batch memos function. Inside batch functions you can find batch add more order memos. Clicking on that will allow you to add a memo to a bunch of selected orders at once. We also have a new batch upload results function. If you go to batch functions and then go to batch upload filing cabinet items, you can upload specific filing cabinet documents or choose all filing cabinet items to upload everything at once. This is especially useful for high volume operations such as inspections or grass cuts. The final new feature inside the batch functions is the recalculate regions feature. If you started to set up your field comp system but had not finished setting up your regions and then started adding new work orders, those new work orders won't be applied to the proper regions. Also, if you adjust your regions, then you might need to recalculate the work orders to go into the appropriate regions. Recalculate regions is going to go through your new region setup and automatically apply the work orders to the proper region. Some offices use Microsoft Outlook for sending emails and they don't to use the email system integrated into FieldCom. These users make use of the send using Outlook button inside the email screen. If you want to always send using Outlook, you can avoid the FieldCom email screen altogether by checking a box inside your options screen. This is found by going to Tools and Options, going to the Email tab, and then checking the Use Outlook to Send Emails checkbox. By clicking this checkbox, you'll never be prompted to use the FieldCom emailer you will always use Microsoft Outlook for emails. The final new function inside of FieldCom is an update to the order entry screen. You can get to that by clicking the New Jobs button. When you click on New Jobs, you first see the Similar Jobs tab, which is the screen that you are used to seeing. This screen asks you to enter in the client information, the due date, and a bunch of other information before you begin searching for the property address. If you've been to a property before, however, the client information is already tied to that property. Using the different jobs tab, you can search for a street address, and that will pull in all associated client information. We can search for a street address that we've been to, and that's going to pull in the associated client, bank, and the rest of that, so you don't have to choose that information in addition to the address. Those conclude the new features that we've added to the FieldCom.net job tracking system.